In an era where even driving to go get fast food yourself is too inconvenient, two button clicks is way too inconvenient. Approve with one button click, and then deposit with a second button click. So the Ethereum Pectra upgrade recently went live with EIP7702, which aims to fix this, along with many other much needed improvements to the wallet experience, which with everyone's wallets being hacked these days is in need of an upgrade. So what is EIP7702? What issues does it solve? How does it work under the hood? And can you really now lose all of your tokens in a single transaction? Let's get froggy. So before Pectra went live, when you wanted to work with a DeFi protocol, you often had to first approve your tokens to deposit into the DeFi protocol. And to do this, this meant you had to send two transactions. So you had to press confirm so many times. And technically from a security perspective, you would have to verify two different transactions are correct, which does lead to some security fatigue, but I digress. And every single time they went to work with one of these DeFi protocols to deposit tokens, they would have to call this approve function again, which was a pain in the butt. Doing this, you're basically approving some protocol like Aave or Uniswap can grab your tokens and do cool stuff with them. But approving the protocol over and over and over again every time you interact with it was very annoying. So what a lot of people did was they just said, hey, you're approved to use as many tokens as you like, which as you'd expect when you say, hate random contract, you're free to use all my tokens whenever you want. When one of those contracts ended up being compromised, people would panic revoke access to their tokens using services like revoke.cash. Given these DeFi protocols unlimited access was not really recommended, but it was convenient, so people did it anyways. But before Pectra, there were other issues as well. If I had a ton of different tokens that I wanted to send to a lot of different people, I would have to send a separate transaction for each token or each recipient, which means I would not only have to click that confirm button twice, I would have to press the confirm button for every single person I wanted to send tokens to. The solution to this that most people would do is they would first send their tokens to a contract, which could programmatically in a single transaction send all the tokens out or to multiple recipients, etc. But anytime they wanted to do something like this, they would have to deploy a custom contract, which meant you're either a developer and you kind of know already how to do this, but you still have to approve to send your tokens to that contract to do it. So you're still pressing multiple buttons. This whole time, though, smart contract wallets like safe wallets always had this ability to batch transactions together or send multiple transactions at once. But once again, though, you still need some type of EOA to initialize the transaction to work with the smart contract wallet. So we as a community said, hmm, what if our externally owned accounts, what if our wallets could be smart contract wallets? And this is essentially the entire premise behind EIP 7702. Whereas before we had externally owned accounts like MetaMask, your ledger, etc. We had smart contract wallets like safe wallet or really any smart contract. We now have either smart EOAs or smart contract accounts or EIP 7702 enabled accounts. I don't know if we've actually settled on a terminology for this yet. We now have this kind of hybrid wallet that is both an externally owned account and a smart contract at the same time. So it gets the best of both worlds here. So instead of having to approve your token and then call the supply deposit whatever function, afterwards you can just enable your EOA to become a smart contract EOA or a, or a smart EOA, I guess I'm gonna use that terminology. Once you enable your wallet to become a smart EOA, you can just approve supply and deposit all in the same transaction. Similarly, if we want to send tokens to multiple different recipients, instead of having to send it to some contract first, we essentially just cram that contract into our EOA ourselves, and then we can send everything in a single transaction. The way it works is we essentially send a new type of transaction, a type four transaction, which has some parameters in it that basically ask, what should my new smart EOA be? What code should it use? This is where you set the address, AKA the authorization of what your EOA should use for code. And here's something important to note. A lot of documentation blogs actually get this wrong. Your wallet, your EOA will stay a smart EOA. It'll keep this code until you deactivate it or switch to some other code. So you essentially link this code to your EOA until you actually say, hey, get rid of that code, deactivate it, and then you'll remove it. So what does this actually look like in your wallet though? Using a new EIP 5792, wallets can use a new JSON RPC called Wallet Send Calls, which will allow you to first set your wallet to a smart contract account, and then also send a batch of these transactions. And here's such an example. In my wallet here, I've got about $2. I've got some Aave V3 and some USDC. And a website can actually initialize a request to our MetaMask or to our wallet. And we'll get this pop-up saying, would you like to use a smart account? This is the wallet telling us, hey, this is a type four transaction we're gonna send. We're gonna upgrade your wallet to a smart contract wallet. I can say use smart account, and then I get this transaction request, where if I scroll down, I can see that I'm actually sending two different transactions. I'm calling transfer on my AWETH, 
and I'm calling transfer on my USDC. The thing for you to look for is right at the top, transaction request, account, and then type smart account. What you don't see here is what code you're upgrading to. What is the actual smart contract? What is the actual code that we're linking to our EOA? That seems like that would be pretty important for us to verify, right? Well, MetaMask and other wallets actually hard code this to a wallet that they actually created and audited themselves. And this is a good thing that we'll explain soon. But let's see what it looks like now when we actually send one of these type four, these EIP 7702 transactions that are batching two transactions in one. On the Explorer, we can actually see some really odd things. We're saying we called some function by ourselves on ourselves. And we can see the from and the to are the exact same address because now our EOA has the code. So it's calling the code on itself. You can see down in Etherscan, for example, it says it's a type four transaction. And you can even see at the top, it shows this authorization list, AKA what is the address of the code that we're stealing from. Remember when we use one of these smart accounts, we're basically saying, give me the code from that address and it's mine now. I'm gonna use it now. I am now this code. So this delegated address is actually the code that we're using. On Etherscan, this one is tagged as the MetaMask EAP7702 delegator. Although our MetaMask didn't show us that this is who we're delegating to, this is who we delegated to, or this is who we stole the code from, if you will. It's important that this is actually hard coded. Now it's really good that MetaMask did this because if we look back at the transaction that was shown, when we hit send, it looked like a regular transaction with some transfers and stuff. This MetaMask delegator contract allows us to basically call the transactions we normally would and it kind of passes them on very safely. If MetaMask and other wallets let any website set whoever they wanted as the code and they set an evil contract under the hood, then something could look like a legitimate transaction but actually steal every single token you have. So while MetaMask and Treasure intentionally don't let websites update who the delegated contract is. However, engineers can obviously set this themselves. This is an example code base that I built where if somebody delegated to this, I could steal all their tokens in a single transaction, even though the transaction would look legitimate. The proof of code essentially looks like this. All you do is you delegate to this evil malicious code, you send any transaction and boom, yes, you could lose all so your tokens a in the misconception transaction. About how yes, you could lose this all feature actually is. Yes, you could lose all your tokens in a single transaction. Yes, you could lose all your tokens in a single transaction that looks like a legitimate transaction, but wallets make it very difficult to do this. So engineers, you guys can all shoot yourselves in the foot, but people using these wallets, as long as you verify the transactions that pop up on your MetaMask, you should be good to go. Now what's cool is now that I've upgraded this wallet that I'm using to a smart contract wallet, on Etherscan actually, and other explorers as well, we now see delegated address, which basically says, hey, this has been upgraded to a smart contract wallet, and here's the code that we're using. The technical details of how this happens is that when you send one of these type four transactions, you add this authorization list, you basically attach to your contracts, this indicator and the address that you wanna to delegate to, and now interacting with that address will basically be like interacting with this code base. This means that pretty soon we will see most websites upgrade from doing this approve and then deposit to just a single button click, greatly improving the UX of this industry and bringing us one step closer to global adoption. Hope you learned something and I'll see you next time.